Hi there, I'm Jessica Rose from the London Jewelry School and today I want to talk to you about pricing for your jewelry business. So this is something that we get asked about a lot at the jewelry school because once you start your jewelry business or even after you've been running some for quite some time, you're going to have questions about how do you price it, how do you choose how much to charge so that you're not kind of charging so much that you're pricing yourself out of the market but you're also not undercharging so that you're not showing the true value and worth of your jewelry. And I think it can be particularly difficult for designers who've made their pieces because we have that kind of emotional attachment to the piece. So today I wanna to share with you a formula and kind of method, I suppose, that I use to help me with pricing and thinking about pricing for my jewelry, especially when I'm thinking about the strategy of the business as a whole and tying in together marketing and other aspects that will be considered in my costs and my sales. So what it is, it's just a simple Excel spreadsheet that I've created and you can download it, it's free. Um, just go to the links on the website below. And in this short video, I'm gonna show you how to use that spreadsheet or how I use it to um, think about your pricing and your jewelry business in perhaps a slightly different way. So without further ado, I will go ahead and open the spreadsheet and show you how to use it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is open up my spreadsheet and you can see it's in Excel. It's, um, it might look a little bit complicated to begin with, but it is actually really simple. And I'm going to give you a link um, in the description for where you can download this yourself. So you can have your own copy and you can use it on your computer um, and you can kind of edit it as you please. So you can see on this side, I've got this column, which is called working out. And that's where I'm going to do all my kind of maths and on this side are my totals. So there are a number of different aspects when we're talking about pricing for your jewelry. And the first one that I normally think about is the material costs. So for example, in this one, I've imagined that I'm making like a pendant on a chain. So I've just typed in here, silver sheet, and then I've put the amount as 10 pounds. So this is a fictional example, but it gives you the idea. So silver sheet and 10 pounds. Then what other materials am I using? So I'm using a jump ring and that is 5p. And then I've put that I'm using a chain and that's four pounds 50. So for this part, you can obviously put in any materials you have. And one thing I'd say to remember about your material costs is to include any costs that you have relating to them. So if you're ordering your materials and there's a big shipping fee, then that will be part of your material costs. Um, so make sure you watch out for those kind of hidden costs. Um, so then it gives me my total. So for example, if my silver sheet, if the price of silver was changing and it was to go to eight pounds, then that would adapt everything that happens in my spreadsheet. So it's all laid out for you in how you can do it. But I'm gonna keep it simple and say it's 10 pounds for now. And then I've got my total material cost over here, as you can see, which is 14 pounds 55. So that's materials covered. And then next I'm gonna go on to my time. So how long has it taken me to make this? And I've put in that it's taken me 0.5 hours, which is 30 minutes. And I've put that my fee per hour is 20 pounds. So of course these things you can change at any time. If it ends up taking you five hours, you just put the amount in here. And if your fee per hour is different to 20 pounds, you can change that as well. And you might charge a different fee per hour depending on the type of piece that you're doing. If it's a very kind of relaxing piece that you know you're gonna spend ages on, you might lower your fee. Or if it's quite an intense piece that takes a lot of time, uh, not time, sorry, but takes a lot of energy and is quite highly skilled, you might increase that fee per hour. And then I have a total time cost of 10 pounds for this piece. So then next I move on to my packaging costs and um, now if you're charging your customers for packaging you do not need to include this in this section or if you want you can include it somewhere else in your spreadsheet but you don't need to add it but if you are absorbing that cost yourself so for example if you're offering free postage and packaging um, then you would need to add this in. And just to explain, the yellow bits are all of the bits that you edit yourself and the rest you can leave as it is and we'll fill out the mass for you. So I've put that my packaging costs, I'm just gonna have a little organza bag and that's gonna be 25p. 
Um, but my postage, I'm going to do a recorded delivery, which is, I've made up this as £1.20. So my total po postage and packaging cost to one forty-five. Then um, I need to turn my attention to think about tax. So in the UK, we have VAT, value added tax. Um, that's only charged on businesses that have a turnover of it changes, but around about 70 to 80,000 pounds. So you'll know if you're VAT registered or not. Uh, most jewelers aren't VAT registered um, unless they have a kind of growing big business. Um, but if you are, you'll need to put that in here because that's another cost to think about. Um, or any other taxes. So depending on what country you're in um, or how, how the legislation works, you need to check if you need to pay any taxes. Most of the time, um, it's not for a small jewelry business. So I've put zero in that for now. Again, you might have zero here in the total postage and packaging if you're not including that to your customer. So adding all of those totals up, we have a total cost of 26 pounds. So that's how much it costs me to make this in that way. Now, there are three prices that are really important as a jeweler. The first one is your wholesale price. Now, the workings out that we've just done are to get your wholesale price, which is £26. So that is the price, and it's described here, that you would sell it to a shop or retailer for. So they will then include a markup, which might be two or three times that. So for example, if I went into my local boutique and I sold them this pendant for £26, they might sell it for a retail price of double that, which would be £52. So that brings us on to retail price, which is the amount that the retailer sells it for. Um, so on this example, I've put in a markup of two. So you can see over here, you can change your markup. So if they were going to sell it for three times the amount, I can change that figure to three and that will change this to 78. So that will go up. So that's three is quite a lot. Um, it, they don't normally charge three. They might do 2.2. Uh, sometimes they'll do 2.5. Sometimes they might do 1.5. Um, but the great thing about this basic spreadsheet is it will just kind of work it out for you. So if you have different items of different retailers, you can add those in. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with two for now because that's a kind of a standard um, that is often used. And then finally, in the pricing section, we have our cost price. Now, this is a really important price that people often don't think about. But this is the amount that it costs you to make it without your time included. So this is all of these costs here minus your time cost. And the reason why we do that is because if you were having a sale um, or, for example, you had like an end of line collection and you weren't you weren't selling it and you really wanted to just cut your losses and and get the money back that you'd paid for it. This would be the minimum amount you would ever really want to sell that piece for. If you go underneath this amount, then you're actually making a loss even on the materials and the postage. So that just gives you a base rate that like, okay, anything over 16 is giving me something. And I've always found that such a useful figure to know because it really helps me with discounting. And when you're pricing for profits, um, you never, as it says here, you never really want to sell a piece below the cost price because you're then making it a loss. Ideally, you want to sell it for the retail price. So that would be this £52 figure. That would be your ideal, your ideal selling price um, when you're selling directly to the customer. And anything you make above the cost price, 16, is your profit. Now, there's a small caveat in this. The exception is that it will be any overheads you have, such as an office. Um, if you do have staff, then that would be another overhead that you'd need to consider. Um, or your electricity bills, um, all these other things that a lot of people don't include or they include a minimal amount in for a small home jewelry business. But if you have a larger business, then you'll need to add a section to this about your overheads. So back to discounting, when you discount or do offers, this shows you the absolute lowest point you could go to. Ideally, we want you know, wholesale or as high as a retail price, but it gives you a real kind of guide, which definitely helps with your strategy. Then going down, I have listed my marketing budget per item. Now, how I work this out, it's my retail price, the 52 figure here, minus my wholesale price. 
So in this example, that's going to be 26 because we only have a markup of 2. So 26 plus 26 is 52. If the retail markup was different, then that would affect my marketing budget. It wouldn't, it's not always necessarily exactly the same as the wholesale price. So how you work it out is retail minus wholesale. And that basically gives you the amount that you are sort of giving to the shop when you're selling through a shop. But when you're not selling through a shop, when you're selling yourself, you're either selling online or you might be doing a market stall, um, then this is the amount that you kind of have to do your marketing. Now, if you can do your marketing for less than this amount per item, then that just goes into your profits and that's great. You know, that's what we want. Um, but this gives you an idea and one way to kind of put this in a, in a tangible way is, for example, if you did a show, um, like a craft fair or a trade show, um, probably not a trade show, but a craft fair or a jewelry fair, and uh, the stall cost you £100, then if you sold four pieces or more, you could work out that that show was worthwhile because four pieces would equal £104, um, in your marketing budget, because you've got a marketing budget of 26 times 4 is £104. You can see I've kind of written this example in here. So if you spent £100 on the show, it would it would just about work. Um, and I find this so useful because I remember I used to do shows and I'd sell some pieces and I'd be like, I don't know if this has been worthwhile. Um, I guess it's been good. I've sold five or six pieces. I don't know. Um, so with this formula, you can work it out more accurately. So that's pretty much it. There are a few other little bits and pieces that I've written in here as notes, how this tool can help you. It'll help you work out your wholesale, retail and cost pricing for your jewelry items, three essential figures for you to know. It also helps you make decisions about your marketing efforts it looks awesome <laughs> well maybe and um, to watch out for hidden costs so I've included everything that I can think of in a standard jewelry business but if you know that you have other costs then there's plenty of space for you to kind of add those in by adding in your own links um, and it's always good to add in a little bit of contingency um, for this for things that come up that might be unexpected like fluctuations in your metal um, overheads you may have, delivery of items that are not working. Um, so it's always good to allow from that. And then the last thing I want to tell you about is at the bottom of the sheet, there are three different worksheets. So this is the full one with all the descriptions and the notes. Then if we go to the working, the empty pricing worksheet, this is just the skeleton of it. And this is the one that's probably going to be most useful because you can just fill in all your details. So an example of another piece, if I was making some beaded jewellery, I might have beads as one of my materials, I might they might cost me £2. Then I might have stringing materials, which might cost me, I don't know, they're not normally a lot, let's say 10p. And then I might have some findings, like my clasps and things like that, and they might come to four pounds this is another example and then you can see it's already filled in our total material cost there how long is this piece going to take me i'm going to say that it's a longer piece and it's going to take me an hour and i'm charging 15 pounds this time for my time so then i've got 15 pound time cost which has been added in there then in here under my packaging i'm going to say I'm going to get the customer to pay for packaging, so I'm not going to have any of those. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't have any taxes either. So then my total costs come to £21.10, as you can see there. But at the moment, right down at the bottom, it's filled in my cost price as well. Hasn't filled in my retail price yet, and it won't do until we add in a retail markup. So I'm going to say that the retail markup on this is one8 which means that the retailer is gonna sell it for 1.8 times the price. So that brings it to 37 pounds, 98 pence. And then we can see down here that the marketing budget per item has been filled in. Remember the marketing budget is retail minus wholesale. So we've got this one minus this one, and that gives us 16 pounds and 88 pence that we could potentially spend on marketing and growing the business. Um, 
And then we have this figure as well, which is marketing for your cost price budget. Now this is if you are going to be selling at cost price, which is always kind of a last resort, um, or if you're doing discounting, or if you're kind of having it as a loss leader to get people to buy other items, then this is our total marketing budget we could spend in that instance. And that's it, it's as simple as that. If you want to add in more sections to your materials, just click um, at, at the end here like I'm doing and then if you left click on um, on here and click insert then it will add them in so you can add in as many columns as you want and if I were to put an extra pound in there for example um, then it would change everything below and that's it um, the final sheet is a printable empty kind of skeleton of this layout and you can use this if you prefer to do your calculations by hand and you just want to print a bunch out and try out different kind of scenarios in terms of what your price is going to be and that is the pricing your jewelry strategy worksheet so I hope you found that to be useful. As I said, it's a great tool to use for thinking about pricing for your jewelry business. And all of these things help to make your business a more stronger, more robust kind of entity for the future. So if you have any questions, do get in touch. And if there's any other videos that you'd like us to create and share with you, let us know. There's a comprehensive online course as well, which is a brilliant one to use if you are starting and running a jewelry business, because it covers all the different topics um, that you will need to consider and think about and really save you a lot of time in kind of making, not making the mistakes that perhaps some of us have made in the past and have a look at the websites for some more jewelry making and some more jewelry business support. And until next time, have a brilliant week. See you, bye.